Hi everyone, I'm Steffi D. And I'm Lisa H. And welcome to Check In From Away. This week we are taking a walk down memory lane. Thanks for joining us. Lisa, I am wearing my best sequins today. You know why? We're celebrating that we've done this many episodes of Check In From Away. Can you believe it? No, I mean, who would have thought when we originally pitched this idea as an Instagram takeover that we would be the writer, director, host, and producers of our own talk show? Also, Lisa, did you ever think you would hate Zoom this much? Yeah, the Zoom hangover is real. We sometimes spend eight to 10 hours a day on Zoom and we should have invested in that company. Also, Lisa, does this mean that we're best friends now? Obvi. Ah! <laughs> Honestly, it's the Canadian Idol episode, episode six. I have to tell you, I love the energy and the dynamics of that episode. I felt like we had finally find, found our flow as hosts. And let's be real, my dreams came true that day. Once you pick up your ticket, you need to think about not doing um, Celine Dion next time and maybe do something that's a little bit more relatable to you. So oh yes, God. I'm a yes. Oh my gosh, all my dreams are coming true. I'm 40 now, I'm too old to be on the actual Canadian Idol, but yes! Well, you can be on, um, you can be on, um, um, what did we used to call geriatric Idol? <laughs> We are so in sync, and also we share a brain. Like it's official, we share a brain. My favorite episode is the Canadian Idol episode. Also, Lisa, my favorite moment in the Canadian Idol episode was definitely Elena Watko dressing up as me in Canadian Idol a million years ago, top eight week doing 80s. Well, since we're doing an idol throwback, I thought I would dress up as Steffi D. Domenico Antonio from her top eight rock week performance of Eight is My Life. Mm -hmm. It's my life. Yeah. Won't you forget? And you had like long extensions. And you were like looking right at the camera and then you like jumped off the off the chair and then you kicked over the chair. Did she kick the chair? And then she was like, oh, I was amazing. <laughs> but obviously I'm gonna dress as F E D because the bows were also your signature. Yeah. That was pretty amazing. She's such a gem. Yeah, she's the best. She's hilarious. Be my best friend, Elena Watko. I think you just said at the beginning that I was your best friend. Yeah, I just, as I said that, I was like, oh my God, like how wow. many best friends do I have? Embarrassing. Lisa, we can't answer that. Come on. My least favorite episode is the comedy episode. You know why? Because it just reminded me how single we are. <laughs> yeah, but we got some good advice. We got excellent advice. In that the next little while, you'll be having all your dates on patios. Beware. Because when it's over, you might find out that you're dating an agoraphobic. <laughs> oh, that's so, that's really good advice. You that think, I had, wow. That just super, came out of left field for me. I had no idea where we're going. Kinky boots. Because I loved the concept, I loved chatting with the people, but just the chaos of trying to get it together when we were editing that section drove me bananas. And I'm sure it drove our editor Tristan like mental as well. I'm sorry, Tristan, for all the pain that we put you through. I'm not. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. This is a really unfair question. I loved meeting and checking in with everyone. I have no, I don't have a favorite guest. And if you have a gun to your head and you have to pick, who is it? Oh, who? Violent here at Check In From Away. I loved having the Matildas and Dan Chamoray on. Oh. They were so fun. And like those young teenage girls are so talented and so cool. I loved checking in with like the backstage people. Cause you know, that's like after my heart. Cause apparently I have no qualms of like throwing everybody else under the bus. <laughs> Listen, I did love everybody. 
it was amazing actually to see so many familiar faces as well as meet a whole bunch of new people that we've actually never spoken to, both of us. Yeah. Um, but I gotta say, my favorite guests were Colin Mockery and Deb McGrath because they made me laugh so much. And after that episode that we shot, I was beaming for like days later. As you know, I've had many an outfit on Check In From Away. I will say this. I want people at home to know that everything that I wore on the show, I already pre-owned. Can we just say that? I just need to say that. My closets here are bursting at the seams. This is a tricky question because my favorite outfit was also my least favorite outfit. Oh, I'm sure I know what this is. Okay. Yeah. So my favorite outfit was the dog episode outfit because I just thought it was the funniest one. It kind of all came together in a really awesome way. And I felt like I really did my makeup really well. I made the ears from old socks, like the night before we shot the episode. I just felt like it was one of my most creative outfits, but the fur jacket was shedding everywhere. Like there was fur everywhere in my apartment after that. The fur was also drifting into the air, getting stuck to my face and stuck to my makeup. And I couldn't scratch because I had like my patch, my doggy patch. Honestly, after we got off that call, I said, Lisa, I love you, but I need to go take this off of my face because I feel like I'm going to die. I also love uh, people's reactions when they saw you. We didn't include this in the episode, but there was some pretty funny stuff when they saw you uh, in that outfit. So why don't we check that out? Oh my God. Why are you so cute right now? Why? <laughs> you like my outfit? You didn't react like this is normal for me. Well, it kind of is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Richard! Uh, <laughs> who's there? Is there a dog in there? Oh, oh, oh hi, Oscar. There's two dogs! <laughs> hi, Steffi doggy. Yeah, me too, Richard. I love it. Do you love my outfit, Richard? I do. Yeah? It never ceases to amaze me how many different outfits you have. <laughs> but the first one would definitely be Jamie McLean singing her song, her original song. I swear to gosh that I was literally tearing up when she sang the song. I felt like the lyrics were so gorgeous. And I thought about the song for like days after. We were perfect, two best friends. You said you loved me to the end. Oh, I, I've seen you cry, I've seen you laugh, trying to move for love. Can't go on, now you're gone, and I can't go back because time goes by. Two, four, six, trying not to cry, but I see you smile, smile, smile. Get this girl a record deal. Number two is when Diane Davis told us the story about the travel agent uh, in Gander during 9-11. It broke my heart. I do not know how I didn't burst into tears at that very moment when she told us that story. My uh, one memory that I haven't had resolved yet is finding a lady crying in a classroom at Gander Academy and she was a travel agent and she was from the States and she knew that her business was gone she knew that her industry was probably gone and she was going through a lot of survivor's guilt wondering if she'd put anyone on the planes. I've no idea where she is. Her name is Sue. If Sue ever sees this, reach out to me in Gander because I'd like to know how that resolved. The funniest moment for me was when we were doing improv with uh, Colin and Deb 
And um, Colin does the part where he's like pretending to be the waiter at the table. He's like, oh, would you like, you know, will someone else be joining you? And then we have the sound effect, wah, 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 wah. I love that moment. Will there be anyone joining you? <laughs> I'll get your menus. <laughs> <laughs> Hands down, when we shot the Mamma Mia episode, and at the beginning of the episode, we did like a song off yeah. where we were singing like ABBA songs. And that's when I realized, I was like, oh, Lisa doesn't know any ABBA songs or any ABBA lyrics. I remember how long we shot so many songs. And I, I was honestly, I was losing my mind. I was laughing so hard. Mamma Mia song off. Who knows the most ABBA songs between me and Lisa? The winner takes it all. The loser standing small. Don't cry for me, Argentina. The truth is I never left you. In this, it's in the same vein though, so I understand why you're doing that. What about this? So when you're near me, darling, can't you hear me? SOS, when you're gone, how can I even try to go on? Go, 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 Sophie, you know what they say. Hang on now, Sophie, you'll make it someday. Sha la la, Sophie, you're doing fine. <laughs> that can be really funny. I kind of like that. Under attack, I'm being taken. Um, oh, okay. Oh, oh. Nighttime lingers <laughs> underneath the staircase. <laughs> wait, wait. I have, I have so many issues with what you just said because A, that was Phantom of the Opera, not Mamma Mia, but two, what were those lyrics? What was that? Legitimately, the staircase? I don't think they ever mention a staircase in Phantom of the Opera. Okay, but did you see the newest production of Phantom of the Opera, the tour? They have those stairs that come out of the wall, that they go up. <laughs> they do. So I was like, I, you do I'm the sorry. whole staircase acting. That's why, that's what came to me. So, okay, so Lisa, zero, Steffi, 100, I win. Thanks for joining us. The whole turmeric, turmeric thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I love how you and Evan Buelan came down on me so hard for saying it's turmeric. You're like, what the heck is turmeric, Steffi? <laughs> yeah, and you do sound like that, Lisa. And I was so mean about it, too. I was like, whatever, what the heck? And then it was, I was so wrong. Also, is it turmeric or turmeric? Turmeric? What the heck is that, Steffi? That's how it's spelled. Hey Siri, spell turmeric. 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 T. Is it? R. M. E. R. I. C. Okay. So Lisa, listen, we got to come clean about something here. Like you and I know that we had have reached the epitome of popularity while doing Check-In From Away. And it's time to talk about what your favorite fan moment is. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing the messages that we get from people every single week. People commenting on our YouTube, people sending us DMs on Instagram, on Twitter. But I have to say that the first time we got a thumbs down on YouTube, I was like, yes, now we're something. Getting thumbs down on some of our episodes is like the moment where I realized that we've made it. And if you're out there and you're watching this, Lisa and I want to have you on the show. Please comment, write to us at checkinfromaway at mervish.com Tell us what you don't like about the show. We are open to criticism. We are open to making the show better. Also, we want to interview you. So please write to us. Okay, well, I have one for my mom and my dad. Oh. 
So for my mom, she loved when I got the golden ticket from Jake Gold. She loved that. And for my dad, my dad absolutely loved the backstage episode. He just felt so proud when I was giving a little bit of an insight about my career and what I had done. He just, he was so proud. He called me up. He was like, oh my gosh, that was so good. It's my favorite episode. I'm like, really? And he was like, you got to talk about your career and just remembering all the things you've done. And he was super excited about that. For me, my ultimate moment where I made my mama proud, she didn't tell me that this is the moment, but I knew, I think, when I had a conversation with her, that when I baked bread from scratch on the second episode of Check-In From Way, which was Cooking with Dear Evan Hansen, I could tell she was like beaming with pride because we're Italian and I just feel like I never really learned how to cook. But in during the pandemic in isolation, I've actually been doing a lot of cooking. And I know that that moment made her so proud. You know what she did say to me actually? What? She did say, she said, you know, you can make things now. And this is super sexist, but she says, now you are good to marry. Wow. Lisa, I want to make Tina Madigan my best friend. That's who I was going to say. <laughs> She's my best friend, Lisa. She's not yours. <laughs> also, uh, Danielle K. Thomas. Oh, Danielle. She's honestly amazing and so gorgeous, and I love her energy. Honestly, Lisa, when the pandemic is over, I am buying a plane ticket for Tina. I am buying a plane ticket for Danielle. I am flying them down, and all four of us are going out on the town. Lisa, who were you the most nervous to interview? Um, I would say that for sure, Louise Petra. Like, she's so nice and so talented and she's such a legend. But of course, she's so nice, so funny, so cool. Like, I wish, I want to hang, have a drink with her and hang out. The guest that I was the most nervous to interview was probably Stephanie Gorin. Oh, right. Yeah, because Stephanie Gorin is a very prevalent casting director here in Toronto. I've auditioned for her many times. Thank you so much, Stephanie Gorin, for having me in your audition room. When we were playing the Hamilton um, trivia game with Warren Egypt Franklin, and to prep for the episode... Don't say it! You had sent me... Don't! All, you had sent me all of these questions for the trivia, thinking that I wasn't going to do my own homework and get my own questions because I was the trivia host. And I go to ask you the first question because I had redone them. And you were like, that's not the question. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I never cheated and I don't cheat on tests. So I well, don't know what you're talking you about. Cheat. You didn't cheat because I didn't use your questions. I made some of my own. No, Lisa, that's not the question you want to ask. Is it? Yeah. It is. I don't know the answer to this. Sorry, can you start over? I was upset because I really felt like I deserved to win the trivia game. And also, this is for Tristan. Tristan is our editor, but I want people at home to know that uh, Tristan made it look like I lost the trivia game when in reality, me and Warren actually tied. We've had a lot of good looking guests on the show. So many. So many good looking guests. And I just want to ask you, honestly, who was your like, your crush? Your checking from away crush? <laughs> um, okay, I have two. Doug Hansel from Come From Away Australia. Oh, my heart. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I would say that Warren Egypt Franklin from Hamilton. Oh. My heart. <laughs> what about you, Steffi? Okay, well, we definitely have both of those in common. Listen, Doug Hansel, let's be honest. He got on the Zoom call. I saw a look in your eyes. I saw a look in my eyes. And I was just like, wow, this guy has like the most amazing smile like ever. I know, and those eyes, those blue eyes, like. Those baby blues. And I was honestly like, I was a moment away from just saying like, hey, Doug. I don't know if you have a girlfriend, you're involved with anyone, you have a partner. Can I fly you down from Australia to Canada? Do you want to try to make it work? Wow. We can figure it out long distance. I would do it for him. I really would. Whoa. Um, <laughs> you're like, wow. Okay. Um, my second 
Checking from Weight Crush would have to be like Tom Allison. Oh yeah. He's oh. So, wow. He's so fabulous and so gorgeous and just like glows and he's like, just radiates good energy and happiness and joy. And I think he's just so wonderful. Thanks for joining us on this week's episode of Check In From Away. See you next Tuesday. Cheers. Cheers.